Hi YouTubers and preppers, this is a uh, review of the Generac GP17500E. It's an American made generator. What I like is it's made here in the USA and in the state of Ohio. I'm not sure of the town, but uh, I'll check that and let you know. I bought this uh, probably about three months ago and it came on a crate with a cardboard box over the top of it. This generator comes packed on a pallet. Uh, it has lag screws that hold it down to the pallet. The uh, parts that you have to attach uh, is this handle on the front. If you can see down here in the bottom there's a little front stand you probably can't see, but there's an uh, axle and wheels that have to be mounted on it. It has a 16 gallon gas tank that uh, if the generator is required to run for uh, a long period of time, it's a 16 gallon tank that it'll run on full blast for about 10 hours. It has an automatic switch here for idle control. If you turn it off, it'll run full blast. If you turn it on, when no, uh, no wattage is required, it'll idle. So it's a very nice feature. I love that it's made in the USA, in Ohio. This is the electrical panel, it has a lot of good features. You get uh, two receptacles of 120 volt. Uh, and uh, 20 amp. One of them, the one on the outside here, is a uh, ground ground fault circuit interrupter. You've got two matching 120 volt 30 amp outlets right here. You have circuit breakers right here, all up and down. This is the idle control right here. This is a, a 12 volt DC 10 amp uh, outlet right here. Down here you got a 120 volt uh, 30 amp uh, receptacle right here. This switch controls an outlet that's underneath that you can run your welder on because it's a 50 amp circuit. It has an hour meter here that gives you a, a lot of information. It keeps track of the oil, the hours, and several other things that I can't remember right now. But uh, once I read the book a couple times, I'll know everything about it. This unit is electric start. This is your battery. I rerouted the battery wires only because uh, I was afraid they were going to rub against each other and may in time short out because of the movement of the engine which is up in this area. The only other concern I had besides the battery cables down here that were uh, rubbing against each other and I separated them and they go through rubber grommets that uh, are provided through uh, this metal piece is we've got a cross member right here where the fuel line by the way, this is the shutoff valve. It's in the on position when it's up, and when it's down, it's in, in the off position. But uh, <clears throat> this fuel line comes up and goes over this cross member, and then comes back down to an inlet, which I don't know if this is a fuel pump, or if this tank is just, or if this engine is just uh, gravity fed where this hose comes up and over the cross member, I'll check with the company to see if it's okay to drill a hole in this cross member and route the line through the cross member and a rubber grommet if it's gravity fed. If they tell me that this is a fuel pump and that it'll suck it over this constantly, then I'll leave it like it is and I'll just put a shafe guard around the hose so that when the motor torques up to full speed that the line isn't constantly rubbing on this uh, cross member. 
out of the whole machine that I looked over and was putting it together, those are the only two concerns that I had, which is very minor. This is a great machine. This is the meat and potatoes end of the uh, generator. Your engine is a 992cc, uh, equal to uh, 30 horsepower at 3600 revolutions per minute. This is a great little engine. It's got a choke lever here. Here's your start button. I'll just give you a little sample. You just pull out on the choke. You got a two position switch, or three position I should say, because it's off. And then in the center for his run. And then uh, when you push the start button, I didn't want to start it up. It isn't good to start it up inside an enclosed uh, area like I'm in right now. That's why I didn't let it start. But it starts up really well. Uh, <clears throat> it's got overhead valves. Your dipstick is right here to check your oil level. I'll turn the machine around a little bit so that you can see where the oil filter is and everything. These little brackets I left on the bottom was uh, the brackets that came on it to keep it uh, fastened down to the pallet it was shipped on. Uh, the company did a really good job of shipping this. There was no damage on it. It worked perfect once I, once I put the oil in it. And uh, it also came with the extra oil filter and uh, two bottles of oil. It's, uh, I can't brag enough about it. On this side of the engine, you've got your oil fill cap right here. You've got a spark plug like this on each side. They also sent extra spark plugs when they shipped this. Down here is your oil drain hose. It's nice because you don't have to get oil all over your machine when you change oil. This just slips out of this bracket like that. The hose has a... Uh, uh, cap right on the end that's easy to remove and you can move the hose out to the side and drain the engine oil. It's, uh, it's more thought that they put into this than, than most manufacturers do. Your oil filter is right here, easy to get on and off. This heat shield for the muffler was a great idea because even though it says hot on it this doesn't get as hot as you would think the exhaust comes out right here it is a little bit loud but uh, <clears throat> for an engine this size uh, I think it's reasonable now this is the top of the fuel tank and if you'll notice right here it has a fuel gauge on it to let you know uh, how full or how empty it is this is the fill cap. It's a nice big fill cap. Makes it easier to fill it without any spillage. This hose here comes off the engine and I believe, I'll have to check in the book for sure, but I believe it's just a vapor hose that returns to the tank. The tank is mounted down with uh, four screws and uh, washers and rubber washers. So it it cushions the tank to where you don't have to worry about uh, in the future it uh, rupturing the tank anywhere from vibration or anything else. Like I said before, uh, when it comes shipped, you don't have the axle on it because it runs underneath here. And you have to install the axle and the tires. The only other thing underneath that you have to mount is the uh, front support which is right under here and to do this by yourself isn't real easy because this uh, generator is about 500 pounds so you have to be careful put the handle on the front first and then uh, <coughs> rock it on, the, on this frame part just rock it back so that you can prop some wood or something under there or if you have a floor jack like me you could jack it up 
and then uh, you can get it safely on some stands and go ahead and put your axle on and let it back down. But if you had two people, it would be a little easier. This is going to be the last part of the review. The only thing that I didn't go over is right here below the choke, which is on top, and there's another pull underneath. This is a de-icer valve. In the winter time when it's below uh, 40 degrees it should be pulled out like that and in the summer time when it's above uh, anytime it's above 40 degrees it should be pushed in this is something that I probably won't have a lot of use for in South Carolina but I'm sure there might be a few days uh, that I get up early in the morning and it's colder than 40 degrees I may have to use it so we're gonna start it up I've got a 7 inch Craftsman grinder that uh, draws 13 amps. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's a pretty heavy duty angle grinder. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. I've got the uh, idle control shut off so that when it starts up, it'll start up at full speed. Then I'll put the idle control, I'll turn it to on. I'll let it idle down and then I'll run the, uh, the grinder a little bit to show you how fast it, uh, it responds to it. that should be the end of the review. I'm very satisfied with this uh, generator and uh, the next video that I put about the generator should be when I have an electrician here because I want to get it hooked up to the house uh, before winter time. If we have any power out outage during the winter I don't want me and my wife in there freezing to death or trying to run the uh, propane fireplace we have to keep warm want to be able to use this to run our air conditioning and heat and our appliances and it should be uh, plenty of power to do that. Well now that we've seen all four sides and how it works and how well it works I recommend this generator to anyone. I bought this when they had the power outages in the northeast on the east coast and uh, they were backlogged trying to get, get enough of these built because a lot of them were sold up in the Northeast. They, I, I can't remember how long they had the power outage, but it, it might have been two or three weeks. And I'm sure a lot of people there were very grateful to have a generator just like this one. So until the next review, and I hope you liked it, come back and watch my YouTube channel Ron K. Paws 1 on YouTube.